and to kind of talk about that and to kind of proceed and maybe push on at that how hard it is to be a woman in the comedy scene have you guys seen this clip this clip is taken from trash tuesdays and it features annie lederman going off on about what's the what's the time time stamp is about suing for unsolicited dick pics and then it, it kind of leads her to go on some rant that i feel like maybe is speaking to the situation that might have happened or didn't happen with Brendan Schaub and the drug walk. But you be the judge of what you think this is about. But I think this might have to do with um, Brendan and Chris Lear and Brian Cannon and all that sort of gang. I think so. Yes, thank you. Actually, thank you. About unsolicited dick pics. <gasps> Ooh. And there's a new law in California, I think, that basically says that women can sue men for sending them an unsolicited I'm a pick. fucking billionaire. Move over. And you were the first person I thought of. The flash law. Sue up to $30,000. You know why I would, I, it's not that, see, if you send random dick pics, there's no proof that, that it's that person's penis. But so many guys these days have their face. All the dick pics that they show me have part of their face on it. So there's actually That's proof when you know them. they're truly mentally ill. It's like you are. <laughs> To be fair, if you're sending someone an answer to a dick pic with your face in it, you're obviously sending it under the proviso that you want to give the person you're sending it to a good idea of what they're going to get, like the goods. You're like, hey, here's my piece, but here's my face. Here's my face, here's my piece. Here's my piece, here's my face. Hopefully you like, do you know what I mean? And I've always said before, uh, I find, I've always found the idea of sending flipping, you know, dick pics a bit weird anyway, especially if to somebody you don't know, unsolicited sort of thing, as a way to kind of flirt, as a way to sort of uh, get them to like you. Obviously, if you've already had some sort of sexual encounter already, maybe sending a dick pic is sort of like equivalent to like sexting or something, so that makes some sense. But just as some any Joe Blow, just sending one, you know, Joe Blow, no pun intended, it's just very, very bizarre. But I've always said this, that I think men are the are the number one, number one culprits of of kind of sharing different disinformation. Does that make sense? Yeah. The number one culprits of sharing disinformation and um what do you call that thing again? Uh disinformation and and tall tales or even yeah, two tale tall tales or, or rumors. For instance, there's always that one guy in your school that you grew up with or in your area who would tell you that they smashed somebody. Oh, I, had, I fucked this girl. I fucked that girl. I kissed that, I kissed that one. It's always these tall tales that were never true and you can't really corroborate them because you're not going to go up to the girl and say, hey, by the way, did you have sex with my friend? You're never going to do that. Or the kid that says they have all the games or the kid that says they played for all the teams or the kid that lies about where they go on the holiday. They always exist. But there is also that kid who tells a story that's really believable but that that's really believable but it's clearly a lie and it's used to kind of you know make themselves look good but then unfortunately that story then gets passed around like chinese whispers and it becomes folklore so i do think there was one guy in the history of the world right who basically was lucky enough <clears throat> to send a woman that they don't know an unsolicited dick pic they caught that woman on the random day when she was hot and ready and maybe was just interested and happened to pass her inbox at the right time that she was on her phone and she said hey yeah come around let's get down that probably didn't happen to one dude maybe a couple of dudes those couple of dudes went and told all their friends about this encounter because it's so flipping you know crazy and so unbelievable then those guys pass that information on to other guys and then other guys because they thought they heard it from so many people they assumed everybody gets that kind of luck so then what happens you have a whole army of dudes sending unsolicited dick pics that's what i think happened i think it was only two or three guys who got lucky off the back of a dick pic and then suddenly dick pics like as a first reply got sent because i see people sharing sometimes pictures of their screenshots from tinder and other dating platforms and it'll be like a girl saying hey or just like some really short interactions at the beginning well, how are you are you good and then by the fourth message there's a piece coming out like there's guys out there who are you know who are backing out the piece like flaccid even on the first dm they're not even waiting for some interactions they're not waiting for an emoji with the 
kiss lips or something or like some google or some starry or some what's heart eyes nah they're not looking they're not looking for any no, no lols just of the strength of a hey that's gonna get them ready get the johnson out let's snap a picture we're on the red carpet bh that's what people are doing nowadays so i think that's what who started these rumors i really do think so so you know apologies to all the women out there because i'm sure one or two guys that you gave the cooch to on the random have now basically put all of you guys in jeopardy you are fucking so crazy. You're asking for a lawsuit. Yeah. My favorite dick pic, I mean, I, I don't like any of them, but my favorite that was sent to me was this guy had his heels together like this. <laughs> he was Indian style. He had his Wait, heels like together like this. Like this? Yes. His and his face? penis was resting over his oh, heels and it was God. so disgusting. <laughs> Wait, it was so can... bad. Yeah. It was so, so Wait, bad. Wait, can we get... What's worse, though, to be sent unsolicited? A picture of a penis or a picture of a JJ? I think they're both weird, right? Someone taking a picture of their JJ and sending it to you, like, what are you meant to do with that? Like, what? Are you meant to, like, print it out, cut a hole in it or something? Like, what are you meant to do with someone's picture of a JJ? I'd much rather get some flipping boobs. Do you know what I mean? At least... I don't know, they're a bit more visually appealing or whatever, right? And then you can maybe get a bit of face, a little cheeky shoulder, right? With a little shoulder strap. But what are you going to do with a flipping JJ? What are you going to do? Please someone tell me what you're going to do with a JJ. The JJ picture. I guess women can say the same thing about a penis picture. What could they do with a penis picture? Are they going to get that penis picture printed and wrap it around a cucumber or something? <laughs> or a matchstick for some of you man them out there. Like, what are they going to do? Please. You guys out there are flipping bugging out. Um, big up, say no more, Gov. Um, I've been watching you since you started. Glad to see you still going strong. Stay blessed. Thank you, my friend. Um, thank you for the nice words. Yeah, I'm always still going strong. Always try to go strong because this sort of stuff actually gives me some level of mental clarity and helps to ease the voices in my head. And because I don't have any real friends, this is the closest I can find. So I'm always going to keep going strong. So thank you for the nice message. Appreciate you. Get paid retroactively for all the penis I'm we've had to endure for on years. earth right now can you How sue can the same person that? for continuously sending them <laughs> i don't know but i'm just saying like if i get one or if you guys got one like i'm pursuing i'm gonna un <laughs> i'm gonna un i'm gonna start allowing dms now yeah my question is where does the 30k come from the person is unlikely to have that just you know like can where you is have it faith from? in these dick pic guys i mean look i just the fact that they're humiliated, they're sex offenders. It is a se it is sex offender. It's so annoying. Okay, so one time, this is a story I want to tell you guys. So I was on, um, there used to be a podcast called Race Wars with Sherrod Small and Kurt Metzger, and I was on it. And I was talking, I said directly on there, I don't want dick pics, okay? But we were looking at like, we were looking at um, Michael Phelps, like, speedo or something and we were talking about penises and i was going I one of the main 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 flops that anybody can do especially if you're like a girl or a woman and you're talking to dudes number one don't laugh at dudes that you don't like jokes because they're going to get the wrong impression and number two don't say aloud that you don't want dick pics because you're going to get dick pics <laughs> I don't know what happens in a guy's brain, but I think guys, when they hear that kind of stuff, you know how some guys are like, they, they never take no for an answer, which is essentially them admitting that they're flipping R word, right? But essentially, some dudes, when they hear don't do this, they also hear, no, please do it. I don't know why some dudes hear that. So sometimes if you're a woman and you don't want dick pics, it's probably best to just never, ever talk about them in general. Just never let them cross just never let them enter your vocabulary. Never let them be stuff you share in terms of content. Never let it be stuff that you like, stuff that you dub, you know, stuff that you leave an LOL in under the comments. Don't do any of that stuff. Just keep it stum. Because if you show any sign that you know what a dick pic is, that you laugh at some of them, that you get some of them, you will get more sent to you expeditiously. I don't like dick pics. Yes, big like up I was Ryan. saying big up Ryan. as we were talking about it. Um, this is to give this person any sort of leeway. Like maybe he misheard me and said, I love dick pics. And I was like, I hate them. Please do not ever. And then so um, this guy sends me a dick pic and I'm incensed. I can't believe it. After I just had spent like five minutes doing like this whole diatribe about how I don't like dick right. pics. I don't know what the word diatribe means, but it's the first time I said it. Anyway. <laughs> it worked. Did it work? It worked. Okay. Yeah. Just didn't need to doubt myself. Okay. Five Be minutes confident. is a diatribe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And right, Pete? a diatribe. Um, and then so 
so I was so pissed that I had just so blatantly said I didn't want it and then he did it. It was such a violation that I screen grabbed the dick pic and I posted it on his Facebook wall. <laughs> wow. With his name sending it to me. And Amazing. he freaked out. For some reason he had Kurt's phone number or got heard some and then he's on the phone and Kurt's like talking and he's like, You I'm a teacher, like how could you do this? And I was like, Can you explain to him that the incident started with him? And all of our issues with men that we've had on this podcast, <laughs> let's remember the issue started with you. You doing a thing. Okay. Oh, who do you think she's talking about there? Hey? Who do you think she's talking about? Okay. Our reactions to it cannot be something that we're in trouble for. You do a thing, there are consequences. That's what I said earlier, right? I remember when this first happened, when this all went down, when the infamous drug walk incident occurred, I was one of the first people, the first people to say when it happened, because I remember. There were some people, and these are people who actually don't like Brendan and don't like his content and, you know, don't think he's funny. But there were some people out there who were saying, hey, what Annie did was was whack. She didn't put a name on it. She shared a story without, you know, wanting to put a name on it, which led to speculation. But also it's pretty clear what she was talking about. And why would you share something like that? And nothing happened. Like, why? You know what I mean, he, he tried to shoot his shot. It's not a crime. Leave it alone. But then I remember saying on the stream categorically that, even I know myself because I kind of sometimes have a tendency to maybe try and reach out to somebody who I maybe shouldn't be reaching out to. Even I know that once you engage in a DM, once you engage in a comment, once you engage in some sort of communication with somebody, especially somebody of the opposite sex or somebody you're trying to pursue sexually, you have to accept that the moment you initiate that conversation, it becomes a two-way story, a two-way interaction. You don't have um, any control or any right or any authority to tell the other party how they should conduct themselves in that interaction or in that communication. You can't tell them, you know, don't share this with somebody. Don't tell my girlfriend. Don't tell my husband. That's my point. No, you can't. You can't put those kind of terms out there. The moment you interact with a person, you start the communication and you open it up, it's a two-way communication and they can do what they want with that, whether it's posting your flipping DMs on a group chat, whether it's sharing them anonymously on a, on some image you are placed or something, whether it's talking about it on a podcast, you have no right to their reaction. You have no right to tell them how they should go about kind of conducting themselves after the fact. The fact that you engage in them in it is your fault. So the fact, you know, once you engage, they have a right to their own reaction also. And I remember that being such a mind fuck for some people. They go, oh, no, she shouldn't have shared it, blah, blah, blah. Keep it private. Nothing happened. But it's like, no, no, no. The point isn't about if anything happened or not. This guy clearly went with an intention. It maybe didn't work out, but you went with an intention with somebody. And that someone wasn't, of course, you know, down to do the thing that you wanted to do and he wanted to speak about the thing. And I said at the time, even, if Brenda would have just ignored it, if he just would have ignored it and pretended it didn't happen, he would have been fine. He would have been fine. I swear in my life he would have been fine. It would have been it would have blown over. No one would have talked about it again and it would have just continued. But I think the kind of arrogance about it, the dismissal about it, the kind of like, I'm bigger than this, I don't need to communicate about it. like just a whole kind of um the the ego that surrounded it all is what probably drove both of them mental in terms of Annie and Kalila. It definitely did drive them mental. I'm for sure. Oh, big up Jess Fury. I didn't see you there. Big up, big up, big up. Um, I think it drove them mental. I'm pretty sure. And I remember saying earlier also that talking about the Eliza Schlesinger thing and about how, you know, she was really kind of with her back up against the wall, really snappy and going at Rogan. I was like saying, hey, in general, it must be really difficult to be a woman in that flipping scene. And you can obviously see the frustration in Annie or what she's talking about because Let's be clear about this whole situation. No one's calling anybody saints. We're all probably going to make mistakes. Sure, some people in this chat, even people are watching, have cheated on their partner or have been cheated on themselves or who have done them. It's, it happens every time in life. It's not a big deal. The thing that I remember, it probably being something that's really disturbing for some of these people to kind of communicate or to kind of deal with, especially the women, is that even till now, the details of this thing haven't necessarily been spoken about aloud. Or the kind of, the real disrespectful part has been spoken about. The disrespectful part for me always has been the fact that Brendan tried to hook up with Kalila. Not the Annie stuff. The Annie stuff, she's single. She can do what she wants. Um, she didn't need to share if she didn't want to, but she did. But the Kalila thing is the one that's really, really weird, in my opinion. Because if Bobby Lee's meant to be your friend, 
if he was a one comedian in that com LA comedy scene that was really championing Brendan and really trying to be nice to him and going out of his way to say nice things about him on the podcast and all that sort of stuff and just being really welcoming to then go around and try to fuck his wife or fuck his girlfriend at the time in Kalila behind his back that was really slimy and that was obviously something that if you weren't Brendan's friend and if he wasn't Joe Rogan's friend that they should have called him out more on but they didn't you didn't hear one person categorically say hey what Brendan did if that is true to Kalila and to Bobby was super out of line was super gross um whatever it may be right no one said that not one person said that um let alone for what happened with Annie because I still think in my humble opinion in general if you're a dude in the small industry in the scene you should probably avoid if anything like the plague trying to get involved romantically or sexually with anybody you work with in a peer group especially in this entertainment industry it's too small maybe you can hook up with a fan or something or whatever maybe but someone you actually work with in the industry whether they're behind the scenes whether they're in front of the camera I just don't think it's worth it it's going to cause too much hassle you're just leaving that to the side and obviously see the fact that Brenda did even to Annie you have no we have no idea because we're not there we have no idea what happened behind the scenes between them or what's happened now as a fallout behind the whole thing does it mean that he can't do certain shows that she's on she can't do certain shows that he's on they can't go in certain places it just affects so many business that's just completely unnecessary and what you're doing it for you're just doing it to get your flipping pp wet you're not actually doing it to pursue a relationship you don't want to break up with your wife and hook up with her you're just doing it because you have um a little kind of you know some 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 lustful feelings because you saw somebody late at night in a bar somewhere and you were drunk maybe have a glass of water have a wank in a car and go home and you'll probably be okay i mean you don't need to pursue these kind of things but i think it must be so frustrating for these women in this industry because they get i won't say treated like crap but if the people that are treating them like crap are linked up with the right men in the industry they can kind of get away with a lot of stuff that's probably what happens day to day if they're friends of somebody else i mean and also imagine if if it's like a friend of rogan did something Again, I'm not going to put out a name because I don't want to legend anything. But imagine a friend of Rogan does something to one of them. But that, but that's a close friend of Rogan's. And they also are friends of Rogan's. Well, they want to say something. Because they don't want to, like, risk completely damaging that relationship with Rogan forever. They don't want to risk the ability to not go on that show forever. They don't want to risk destroying another comedian's flipping career. Do you know what I mean? There's so many things that are kind of wrapped up in their head that they're probably thinking about. When in general, they're actually the victim and they should be speaking up about whatever happened. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter how bad it may be for them. So, it must be very difficult. It must be very difficult. But I think in this clip, it's safe to assume who they're talking about. We know what the deal is. And, you know, in general, the, the kind of conclusion of all of this is just big up Annie and Kalila. Because without Annie and Kalila, I don't think we would have been in the position we're in now where everybody is collectively pointing and laughing at Brendan and Brian and kind of calling out their kind of, you know, lunacy, calling out how crappy is that comedy, all this sort of stuff. It wouldn't have happened without Annie and Kalila. I don't think so. I think obviously Ari Hawani kind of set the dominoes in, in action in some regard because he was willing to just kind of go in on Brendan super hard. He didn't care about Rogan or anything. He just attacked, attacked, attacked um, or kind of, you know, um, defended himself against uh, Brendan's kind of insane lies that he was putting out there about him. But Annie and Kalila, for sure, in terms of the comedian space, they definitely were the people who saw like set that match and got it kind of started. But one one thing, one thing that I'm interested in to speak about that I kind of want to say that might be a weird thing to end it on. I think the lack of people who came out to say anything about the whole Brendan trying to fuck Kalila behind Bobby Lee's back. I think the reason why they didn't say nothing as well, have come to think about it, is maybe a lot of them have either tried to do the same thing themselves or most of them probably do cheat on their partners. It's just a common thing that happens in that industry. In the same way it happens in sports, in the same way it happens in fucking hip hop and shit. I think that's just a common thing for sure. Uh, but I just think they're probably smart about keeping it, you know, off the internet and not making it so obvious and whatnot. I think it happens because number one, a lot of these flipping comedians have a lot of parasocial relationships with people all around the world especially if they've got a very successful podcast especially if they've got a discord especially if they've got other communication ways to email people or snapchat whatever they've got right they're talking to fans a lot on the sly so you build a connection you feel like you're getting close to that person and then of course they're going on tour all the time so if you go on tour all the time and you're you know you're you, 
you're always kind of active you can essentially have these different relationships in these different states everywhere you go on tour and the people that you're going to hang out with well i are fully aware of your situation it's not a it's not like a you're not hiding anything because most of these comedians share way too much on their podcasts anyway so they're fully aware that you're married they're fully aware that you have kids but they're also your fans and they also want to have a good time so they don't mind just you popping in every four months or whatever you're in your, when you're in your town in your state and to hang out and get up to any kind of tomfoolery i think that's what happened i think that's why you didn't see that much of a reaction from other comedians about that part of it a lot of them reacted to the bullying and the intimidation tactics that brian Cannon and brendan were doing to flipping um bobby lee and maybe bgl took in part two but you didn't hear a lot of them sort of like get on their moral high horse and get on their soapbox about you know hooking up with a friend's girl and all that sort of stuff you didn't hear that a lot because i think a lot of them get up to it themselves you know what i mean that's what the kind of clear indication was there for me but hey what do i 